Hi everyone, uh, I am Sandesh and today I am going to talk to you about Internet of Things, more commonly known as IoT. Uh, if you have been wondering about the new world of embedded devices uh, in your home and your household or offices that makes your life simpler, or how interconnected devices can transform the physical industry or even about the recent DIN attack which um, happened when we were right here at Full Stack, then you have come at the right place. Um, so I would like to take uh, you through a journey on my balloon right here. So we are flying through New York City and uh, here we are in a nice beach and as you can see we have landed safely. And uh, let's check out what this lighthouse has to offer. Uh, so to define IoT, um, uh, IoT uses embedded technology to communicate and interact with uh, external environment. Uh, with each other via internet and also uh, with uh, people. Uh, unlike the current connected devices like your laptop or your smartphones or your tablets, uh, IoT uh, has translated this form of physical atmosphere and uh, it basically forms this interwoven connected uh, network and basically everything is connected to everything. That's why they call it the Internet of Things. Uh, uh, the reason we are evolving into Internet of Things is because of evolution of uh, cloud computing, uh, decrease in processor size, and also because of uh, now that we have IPv4, IPv4 6 and IPv4, uh, IPv6 routing. Uh, uh, this data shows how the growth of embedded devices grows uh, as we go along. As you can see, we have already uh, surpassed uh, the number of devices per person here with the population of Earth. And uh, we are reaching in 2020 where the embedded devices surpasses almost six. And for places like US, it's almost like uh, 20 per person. And as you can imagine, it's almost more than 100 devices in a household of a family of four. Uh, so we have a technological roadmap. Although this is very optimistic, it doesn't go linear we can have a lot of problems down the road and um, this graph uh, going all the way linear and only nice things happening doesn't always happen in the real world and uh, as uh, problems arise with IoT we can see having a more uh, non-linear curve as we go along towards a future of IoT. Uh, so in this part I'd like to talk about how Internet of Things is distributed between industrial and consumer. Consumer devices are the ones that you ha have in your household and even offices, uh, something like embedded microwave or embedded uh, toaster or even carpets, basically any devices within your household that you can embed technology and that you can connect to internet. And then we have industrial uh, IoT where they are used uh, for uh, monitoring uh, data or just uh, devices which doesn't necessarily require user interface which uh, makes uh, job simpler and basically that automates the system itself and makes uh, jobs safer in those environments where humans uh, cannot go and would uh, risk their life. Uh, so it all seems nice and good, but uh, as we can see, there's uh, a problem arising in the horizon. So we have to discuss what the problems of IoT are. Uh, uh, in my opinion, IoT is a huge uh, disaster as it is right now because uh, there's uh, no security involved in the way things are. And uh, some of the problems we have right now is, uh, as we uh, have seen over the 90s, like how we used to get scammed from emails, which has a very bad English and which asks you to basically send Western Union transfer to somewhere you don't know. And it's uh, hard to fall for scams like that. But uh, even people like that have uh, gotten uh, way smarter and the modern scam looks something like this. And this can happen to even people like us. Like basically what happens is like all of your uh, data get encrypted and you have to pay a ransom for someone to basically decrypt your data. And when you are stuck in this situation, you have nowhere else to go and you are in a situation where you're not sure whether if paying the ransom helps or you're just stuck with buying a new laptop or your mobile devices or anything like that. And uh, applying these uh, problems with IoT, which are not insecure, can lead to much more uh, problems. So I introduce to you what we call the Internet of Ransomware. So if you have all these devices in your house, like basically every device can be hacked and used against you. So I have some of the examples here, like uh, 
your uh, coffee uh, machine can be hacked and they could ask you to pay ransom and uh, even uh, things like brooms which uh, ca if can be connected to the internet is very harmful if it can be hacked or even things like your uh, uh, cars and basically everything that is connected to the, in to the internet. The other problem we have is uh, something more bigger which influences a lot more people and even companies which are very large and powerful. So what we uh, call DD, uh, DDoS attack happens some way like this. Uh, if I were to give you a brief overview, what happens is like uh, uh, for those devices which does not have a secure uh, connection between how they are connected to the internet and other devices, attackers can uh, basically input uh, what they call a uh, Mirai malware and uh, when you have a Mirai malware in your bars, as a bars in your devices, uh, people can uh, use it to send garbage traffic from all over the world to target website and then that website which you can call a DDoS victim cannot handle that garbage traffic and basically the whole website goes down. The other problem we have as individuals is involves privacy because uh, when we have so many devices connected to the internet and we are putting so many information out there it's just a lot of data and when there are data modeling out there can tell a lot about individual when you have your toaster connected to your internet you can be uh, like there are hackers who can tell what kind of bread you like and that's a very private information like and uh, if they can go somewhere as deep down that and make a pattern out of you, then if you have like 100 devices in your house, that's more than you know about yourself. And it also involves how companies can use it against you. Like if you have a IoT devices embedded in your car, inter, uh, insurance companies can monitor that data and basically curate a uh, insurance policy that fits your driving habits and that's without telling you and uh, that is basically invading your privacy. So like as we have all these problems but I also with my research I have found some solutions but as we are, our devices uh, volume gets larger and larger it's uh, time that we have to act fast and basically make all these internet devices as secure as we can. Uh, I have a very good quote here from uh, a famous uh, network cybersecurity guy, uh, Dan Gere, you might have heard his name. Uh, so uh, the way we have our embedded devices right now uh, is they are unfixable and immortal and that creates a problem because uh, when you have your devices um, as unfixable and both uh, unfixable and immortal, either uh, they have some sort of, uh, either they are supposed to some have some sort of uh, management interface uh, and receive regular security updates or they must have a limited lifespan. Otherwise, they become an immortal Terminator-like uh, Terminator entity and it's very difficult to fix them when we need to. So I've also created uh, this list of uh, way of solving this issue. Uh, so the, the first most important thing is having a device that is automated to update itself regularly and also uh, about having public penetration testing and I have also a link here which is very long and it's hard to copy but uh, this is a link that offers uh, all the security standards that can make uh, IoT devices more secure and some of the other things would be like sharing to third party should not be done, administration by vendors should not be done and if you require internet connection to administrator that's a no to and if you require third party servers, service to function, that's a no too. And um, it should notify the user or the company about any form of intrusion, if there's any malware installed in it, or if there's any kind of intrusion other than how it's supposed to work. It should uh, send some form of notification. And um, also it should um, log all of its access and have some form of data that you can access. And uh, the last one is to encrypt all of the network traffic. Uh, so that's all I have for IoT. Thank you very much for listening.